not your average vacation. But it's one you'll never forget. For in the midst of the unspoiled beauty of the Cumberland Mountains lies a river that can give you all of the excitement that you can handle. And even when you're relaxing, it can take your breath away. Known affectionately as Virginia's baby, Dickinson County is the home of the Russell Fork Whitewater Rafting Festival, which explodes with excitement each fall as whitewater enthusiasts from all over the world arrive to match their skills against the Russell Fork River. The Russell Fork offers visitors many moods and experiences. It can provide serene tranquility and awe-inspiring beauty as it flows through parts of the 1,600-foot Brakes Canyon. Family-style rafting can be enjoyed along several miles of the river to the Garden Hole. But then, as the river reaches the Brakes Canyon, the experts match their skills and resolve against the raging rapids and currents, to which they have given such names as Triple Drop, El Horrendo, and Climax. The downhill run on the Russell Fork has become well known as one of the most challenging in the world. Dickinson County was formed in 1880 from parts of surrounding counties and since has been known as Virginia's Baby. About 1910, the Yellow Poplar Lumber Company moved into the area and built a huge concrete splash dam, the first and largest of its kind in the world. The water behind this dam was caught and held until it became an 85-acre lake. Into this lake were dumped thousands of giant poplar logs cut from the surrounding mountains and hauled by horse, mule, and oxen teams to the dumping site. When masses of logs lay behind the dam, a tremendous dynamite explosion was set off, which forced open the floodgates, allowing the huge mass of logs to catapult through the openings and down the gorge. The noise was deafening. The tremendous roar shook the surrounding hills for miles around and has remained a vivid memory to those few who were old enough to witness it. Dickinson County's oldest citizens remember how rafting on the Russell Fork began back in the early 1900s. Uh, each one of those uh, uh, sluices there, over the over the top, there was a there was a big tree that was laid across each one of them, and uh, these smaller spires that stuck down into the bottom of those traps, they were fastened through this uh, log across there uh, with the, with cables and. Uh, the bottom of these spars were facing to a, a trap or a trigger. And whatever they got, the dam pool and the log pool, they even put logs above there and no over here bowls. And when they got ready, then they, they would uh, set the explosion off and knock the trigger, let all the water through. And, at times, after after they got in, a, in operation, they built another dam at Hayside. Then uh, they would let that off up there. Then by the time it got down here, then they, they would just cut this one off, and they'd both go together. You couldn't hear nothing. That's uh, when they turned that water loose, you know. It, it was worse than our four freight trains are running together. They'd have four or five of them, them rags together. They'd be four or five going out at the same time on them rags, you see. Just one fella didn't run them inside. 
They'd have them together in about four or five. Fellers would get on, there'd be two fellers on each raft. And uh, they had these oars that steered them right as well. That some way keep them out of the banks, you know. Behind this terrible flood of logs and water went the first known rafters of the Russell Fort. Theirs was a brutal and dangerous task, which began as the ice on the river was beginning to thaw. Although not undertaken for pleasure, the thrills on the icy river were plentiful, whether welcome or not. The rafter's job was to prevent log jams using long gouging poles to push the logs apart. Their rafts were simply made of logs lashed together with rope. Their lone luxury was an occasional strip of tin nailed to the logs to allow a small fire on board to ward off frostbite. Today, the old splash dam supports the bridge where State Route 611 crosses the Russell Fork and where many paddlers and rafters begin their whitewater adventure. In 1960, the Army Corps of Engineers began construction on the John Flanagan Dam. The completion of the dam in 1964 ushered in a new era of sport and recreation for Dickinson County and the surrounding area. There is a wealth of early American history in the area where the Russell Fork breaks through the Cumberland Mountains. Daniel Boone led some of the earliest settlers through the Brakes Canyon and faced the dangers and challenges of the wilderness frontier on some of the same paths walked by visitors today. Huge boulders in and along the Russell Fork forced him to find another way into Kentucky. Nearby, the Brakes Interstate Park offers some of the most breathtaking views of natural beauty in the United States, including bird's eye views of the Russell Fork and the whitewater activity in the canyon below. From the park's overlooks and trails, you can experience the beauty and majesty of views into Virginia and Kentucky. Dickinson County provides many other lasting memories for its visitors. If you enjoy hiking or horseback riding, you will never forget the dramatic 26-mile National Forest Trail as it winds along the crest of the Cumberland Mountains dividing Virginia and Kentucky. We know you are going to want to take back some souvenirs of your mountain adventure. Our local craftsmen and artists create some of the most fascinating and colorful art and craft treasures available anywhere. And if you have something special in mind, remember that our motto is, if we don't have it, we'll make it. At the Cumberland Museum in Clintwood, you can step back through time to get a real feel for the culture of the area as you explore the miniature coal mines, as well as tools and survival items of the early settlers. The Dennis Reedy Museum in Clinchco holds a wealth of railroad and coal mining memorabilia for its visitors, as well as some large pieces of the area's fascinating history. There are many other attractions that you'll want to visit while in the area, including the historical town of Hayside. The Russell Fork flows right through the middle of Hayside, which has been nicknamed America's hometown. The Chamber of Commerce will be glad to provide you with complete information and brochures featuring all of the area's attractions. But, of course, for paddlers and rafters, the Dickinson County Whitewater Festival provides the pulse-quickening excitement they seek as the experts, as well as adventuresome newcomers, face the challenge of the mighty Russell Fork River. A challenge that some will find overwhelming, while other skilled and more fortunate souls will triumph and ride the waves of personal thrill and success for another year until it's time for another run down the magnificent Russell Fork.
Well, hey, city boy, you say you want to come back in the mountains. You done got it figured out, gonna do a little Daniel Boone. You're gonna wrap that brick and climb them cliffs down where they call the bricks. Where well, you got your fancy gear, but that ain't all it takes. Well, you might order to heed the words I say and pack on up your bags. Catch the nearest Greyhound bus back home. Cause this here river's done decided she ain't gonna be beat By the likes of some smarty Yankee boy And we won't hear you moan Cause the river crashes loud It's been bold, it's tall and proud Many's the one that's tried before When I swam up to the bay Hey, silly boy, you should have listened to my warning I was just trying to save your lousy skin Now the searching heart is done, gave up And headed back for home I guess the only thing left to do Is notify your next kid Cause that river You want to come back in the mountains You done got it figured out Gonna do a little down boom You're gonna wrap that crick And climb them cliffs Down where they call the bricks Where well, you got your fancy gear But that ain't hard to take Cause the river 